The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Uh, well, we have a full moon tomorrow, so let's keep a close eye on that. Uh, what we're going to be looking at today to start off with is the uh, German DAX. As you can see, it's been in a, a pro 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 extended downtrend for quite some time, bouncing around these little ABCDs. But the one that looks the most interesting today, folks, is the, um, if you'll take a quick look at this, this is the uh, the uh, UK market, as you'll notice here, we rallied up to the 78% level, just spot on up there at 72.80. We've now broken down about 70 points into major support here at 72.40 in the uh, 72.14 in the uh, FTSE. So kind of keep an eye on that if you do it. You know, it follows the nice patterns. The one that uh, Alan didn't put in here that's real interesting, if you look at the low from August the 12th and the one into the 13th yesterday, you can see that really nice three drive to a bottom there. There's a small one in green. He's got that one pointed out, but that larger ABCD has a really nice one from the area of 72.60 down to 71.60. Very similar to like what we're doing in the S&P. So let's take a quick look at what's going on with that S&P because uh, we uh, we had some real interesting things that we were sending out yesterday because of the fact of what that market was doing. Shut the front door and where did it go? I know it's here somewhere. So just bear with me here one second, folks, and we will get it. Oh, we got a caller from uh, the state of Washington. Marshall, how are you this morning? Good morning. How are you this morning, Larry? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm by myself. I I sent uh, my friend John Jameson over to uh, California for uh, the week to look at all the museums, the Getty Museum and the Manley Hall Institute and all that stuff so that I could take a little break. <laughs> what can I do for you, my friend? Well, I, you've been talking about this research you've been doing with Jameson for quite a while here, and I was <laughs> kind of wondering if you kind of explain it a little bit, what you've been doing, and, and oh, tell us yeah. what's happening, and is it going to go sure. further, and what's going on? Uh, I think we're we're getting close to where we're going to uh, – we found out some of the things that we liked. I met John 15 years ago. He became my student, and I've been – conversing with him for about an hour a day for the past year on a, on a project that uh, not related too much uh, to commodities. It's more uh, cryptocurrencies, trying to learn some of it, which I have had a, had a difficulty with. But uh, I invited John to come over and spend, uh, you know, July, August with me to uh, take a little break from, uh, you know, the Isle of Man and, you know, and have him here with me working with computers and stuff. So that's been a lot of fun. But when, when after he got here, I realized he was an autistic savant. And I don't know if you've ever been around anybody like that, Marshall, but it has, uh, it has opened Opened my eyes to what the mind can actually do. He reads he reads more books in a week than I probably do in two years, and he remembers it all. Uh, has a photographic memory. If he reads something, he can repeat the page back to you word for word without even missing a comma. I wow. mean, it's uh, yeah, and he's very good with computers, which is you know helpful to me. I can copy and paste now. Can you believe that? The next thing, next thing, uh, he was going to try to get me a Twitter account, but he realized that was too sophisticated for me. But the main thing that we worked on is uh, he, he works on data, and we, we watch, uh, you know, these things he works on are called Bayesian statistics, you know, way above my pay grade. But it's based on data dependency and what data does in the past and how it moves to the future and uh, that kind of stuff. And so we found a couple of things that are just absolutely uh, incredible. We're testing them now. And uh, it's it's very very 
exciting. So that's mainly what it is. But uh, boy, it's intense. My uh, Marshall, he he starts at five in the morning. He goes to ten o'clock at night nonstop. And when when it comes time for him to sleep, he literally has to do exercises, yoga exercises, and some other stuff to calm his mind down, so that he can uh, so he can come down so he can get down to a level that he can sleep. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. It doesn't. We we've, we've introduced him like you've been out here to see me lots of times. So you know, you meet some of our friends and stuff, and they just they're amazed at the level of knowledge that he has. I mean, it doesn't make any difference what subject you talk about. He, you know, he's uh, he knows a lot about it. And he's really nice. You know, he's really, he's funny and he's nice. He's normal, but boy, he's he, he just like the Rain Man on the you know, the other side of the scale. <laughs> it's just uh, yeah, wow. it really is. It's uh, it's really it's been good for me because I uh, I realized how subnormal I really am. <laughs> but I keep I keep I keep it as I keep it as simple as possible. And what I've been able to do for him because he likes to trade. But you know, he, for him to look at a screen is just about the most boring thing in the world. But uh, he does like the results, and I've tried to get him to you know to calm his mind down and maybe just look at one or two little things. And that's what we've been really trying to focus on. So. That's pretty much it. Wow. Well, you, you've really hit it out of the park. You found Shane, and, and, and now... Yeah, uh, we're, yeah, we're but, yeah that, that's uh, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Student. Yeah. Well, and you. I found you, too. What are you talking about? You know? Give me a break. <laughs> well, I do, I'm doing okay. <laughs> I know you are. I, I, I think about you all the time every time we drive by uh, Guadalajara. And please give Lynn my regards, and uh, we hope to see I'll you, do that. you know, this spring when as you always come by. When we come in about six weeks, so uh, we'll we be here. to we'll uh, be here. Sabino Canyon and do that, that night tour with Full Moon. Uh, yeah, that, yeah you, have you been up to the, have you been up to Mount Peak, uh, Mount Kim, uh, Mount Peak, uh, what's that? No, Kit Peak Kit, to see the yeah. astronomy lob. That's really cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's real yeah. great. It's yeah. far out. Really uh, appreciate all the hospitality that you've shown us and the and uh, appreciate everything you've taught me too, Larry. Okay, thanks. well, thanks a lot, Marshall. Listen, you have a good day, my friend, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you pretty soon. Okay. 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 Bye. All right. See you later. Okay. Um, all right. We'll move here on to the next thing that we want to keep an eye on here is uh, we've had an inversion in the yield curve that caused the bonds to go absolutely uh, ballistic to the upside. We took out oh, – actually, we took out 165 in the bonds. Notes have not made a new high, but it's probably just a matter of time before they do that. We've had a little rally back in gold from the bottom. If gold gets – if gold – uh oh, let me see what's happening here. Hopefully, we still have a uh, connection here. Double check. Broadsword to Danny Boy. Broadsword to Danny Boy. Have I lost internet? Have I lost internet? The chicken is in the pot. The eagle has landed. I think, uh, okay, I'm still live. All right, there we go. We're back in business. Uh, I want to. Uh, bring to you your attention the uh, chart of Bitcoin because it has been following pretty much exactly what's been going on with the gold market and I've got a couple other stocks that we want to cover some folks that have asked for some questions but we did make that 61 percent retracement up there at 12,200 we're now trading at 10,500 so uh, we have a nice correction here uh, in the Bitcoin much like we did in the gold if gold gets above the 1130 uh, excuse me 50 the 1538 level, uh, we could easily see uh, 1575. That's uh, that could easily happen. So we'll we'll see. When we live in interesting times, I, I will cover the S and P first when we get back because that's the most questions are asked for. But I'll have that S and P chart for you when we get back. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted a chart of the E-mini S&P uh, with that high that we made yesterday. Uh, as you can see here, all we did was go out and take out the high that we made uh, three days ago, uh, four days ago, uh, but that one, excuse me, 29.40 uh, level, we hit 29.44. Uh, of course, we're trading, you know, 50 handles under that right now. Uh, that was nothing more than going up into really strong resistance, and you can see um, the, the importance of the Fibonacci numbers as you look at it. I mean, it's right there. There. Uh, now we're now we're at the point on the downside. We really need to hold. Should we get below 28.65? That's going to be quite negative, and whether that'll happen or not uh, remains to be seen. But um, these markets react to Twitter feeds or whatever happens, and they move quite a bit. And uh, that's all you know. It's really all you can do. We could see that coming yesterday because it was coming off a of major support. And what we did is we went right up and stopped at major resistance. The problem we're having, folks, is that the small caps. Are, are doing so very, very poorly that it's really uh, it, it's really important that we look at this next chart I wanted to show you here. This comes from uh, uh, Raymond James Research, but it really gives you a good idea of how poorly the uh, stocks for the uh, the small caps are doing. And that's, uh, you know, a big part of our economy, of course, is the smaller companies. And you can see this down move that we've had here has been, uh, you know, even more substantial in the small caps than it has been in the larger ones because the Dow has held up relatively well. And we're still, you know, substantially below the lows we made on August the 8th, which was the, you know, the really big down day we rallied back up. But going below that low of August the 8th would be uh, incredibly bad. And today's a really important day, mainly because we're one day off of the full moon 
in here, and uh, it's just going to be really important to see whether we can hold this uh, 2860 level uh, in the S&P. That's going to be the key for me to watch that because breaking that means you're heading down, and this lunar cycle that we're looking at either today or tomorrow may not – you know, be uh, bringing in any support, but we'll do one thing at a time. Now, we had a question for a couple of things that we needed to cover. One was uh, the thing about that I mentioned yesterday about Deutsche Bank. I wanted to bring this up because uh, I had a question about it from someone last night. If you'll notice here, back in January, Deutsche Bank came out and offered their stock at a 35% discount. Folks, Stop and think for just a minute. I mean, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. Why is somebody doing that? You know, why why can't they just go to the bank and get the money for that? I mean, that that's a, this is just common sense. But <laughs> I just thought of something funny. Speaking of common sense, why would anybody? Why would you give a hundred thousand dollars to somebody to hold your money and not get all of it back? And that's what they're doing in the bond in these uh, foreign banks, like uh, or foreign countries like uh, France, Switzerland, uh, France, Switzerland, Germany. Uh, Spain and uh, one other one, I can't, uh, UK, I mean, and Japan, you know, and uh, that's what they're doing, you know, but that's the way it is. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, um, now you see where we are as we're heading down. We're almost, if we take out $6, the, the, pro, the you know, it's going to go down to that 1.618 down around four. And there's no way that Germany is going to let their flagship bank go under. So, uh, you know, it's going to, if it drops in half again from here, we're going to be looking at something that's going to be uh, relatively interesting to look at. Someone's asking a question here, um, mentioning Bitcoin. Uh, okay, oh, here's a question. Mr. Z is asking about Bitcoin. And okay, here is uh, here's some questions. Um, I think Terry. I think what I think the central banks have made a bad mistake, and they don't know how to correct it. If you want to know the truth, that that's hey, but I hey. I'm so far behind the yield curve on that's the thing that I don't really know. But here, here's the the one thing that if you want to write these down, you know, there's thousands of bitcoins out there, and China has most of them. But the uh, the main six that John follows, I'll, I'll give you these. These are Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Cardano, and Stella. And his favorite is Cardano. It sells for about a nickel a share. And the reason why he likes Cardano is the man who used to run Ethereum, uh, Charles Hoskinson's, this out of a company out of Hong Kong, is running Cardano. And it's got all of the things necessary to make blockchain that good. Now, it's only a nickel a share, so nobody sees it. But there's so many of them out there. Uh, that's pretty much what it's at. So those are the ones, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Cardano, and Stella. And believe me, uh, he he really understands this stuff. Um, uh, yeah, he he just really does. Anyway, that's the, I, that's all I know about it. You know, I really don't know. Uh, I'm going to try to get him on next week uh, when he's back to uh, you know g talk to us. But he he doesn't like to uh, he doesn't like to you know to get into the public stuff very much. Anyway, let's take a look at a couple other things that uh, some people have asked me about. And the next one, of course, let's get it up here so we can see it. And that is the uh, the old uh, granddaddy of them all, which is uh, General Electric. Now, uh, you can see here, uh, the main thing is, is look at 99. You can see the three drive to a top pattern, just uh, sweet as could be up there in the January of 2000. And the market went from 60, you know, all the way down to five. And then it rallied up to 32, is now trading at around nine. And this looks like, you know, the stock is not going to go anywhere. But this was the or last of the original Dow Jones Industrial Averages over 100 years ago. It was the last one. It was replaced by Walgreen. So uh, that's pretty much it. People don't realize, but of the the uh, 30 Dow Jones Industrial stocks, 15 of them uh, went bankrupt during the time between 32 and 37. I think American Telephone went bankrupt twice, as I recall, from the book only yesterday, which is I re as I recall that. So we'll keep an eye on that. Okay, the next one that uh, someone has asked us about is the old, let's get this up here so we can see it, to get into the marijuana stocks here a little bit. Don't do stocks, but we do charts. So here's uh, this Tilray. You'll notice it. It made a top up there to 300 bucks. Uh, one of these uh, vertical moves. Now this is this is what you really call a uh, uh, 
uh, what, what do they call that uh, doggone thing? A mania. That's definitely a mania up there. But the key there is if after the market break breaks from 300, you know, down to 100, it rallied up to the 382 level exactly at uh, 170, and from there it's you know got all the way down, you know, to 30. The best way to look at it where we are right now is if you'll just blow it up uh, on the daily and just be able to see it a little bit better. You'll be able to get this up to see, but this still looks bearish. I mean, it's not going to go anywhere, but we're completing. We just completed a little ABCD correction here last night at 46. So uh, that's uh, this is pretty much the uh, this whole thing about cannabis might be uh, a real blow off. Whereas the thing with the uh, the Bitcoin, we really didn't do that. Uh, Mr. Z is asking. No, I've never traded anything. I, I, Mr. Z, I, John, I hardly ever trade stocks. I mean, I, I really do. I, I Mainly, I do foreign exchange and futures, and that's pretty much it. And I don't really do any more than that. That's uh, And I only follow about 12 things. You know, that's my biggest my biggest thing with John is to get him to focus on just, you know, five or six things. But you get him to focus on something, and the next thing you know, he's, he's looking at a, at a monthly pattern that has nothing to do with trading. You know, so uh, you got to keep it really simple, folks. It's, it's not that hard. Like, you know, like Mark Douglas says trading is simple but it's you know it's not easy and the, and the easy part is uh you know being able to uh you know understand you know what what you really need to do to try to make a buck well hey when we get back here uh, yes i do terry uh, we'll, we'll get back here uh i want to talk to you about a problem that some people have i think you'll like it Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I want to walk through these charts that we got from Bill Meridian from Cycles Research last week on the cycles uh, of the bonds uh, showing, you know, the, the August is usually uh, the topping month. But before I do that, I had a really great email last night from one of our good students, or well, they're all good students, one of our good friends over in Hong Kong. We were chatting about what's going on over there, and she's doing pretty well with her trading, but there's one flaw that she has that she's having a hard time getting over, and that is she's watching the monitor too much. And folks, the only, you know, the monitor is not your friend. Basically, it's a mirror of all the psychological baloney that's going on in your life at that time. I mean, it really is. And when you start counting money, that's when it really gets difficult. So I would really highly urge you, you know, to try not to look at the monitor, you know, all day long. First of all, your eyes will go bad. And second of all, it's not going to help you at all. You can do short-term trading if you like, but only do it for periods of, you know, an hour, hour and a half. But the best thing to do is to you know plan your trades for the day and then put the order in and as soon as the order is filled put your stop in put your alerts in if it's made the first profit objective and the rest of it not even worry about because the market doesn't care about you they really don't I know it's hard to believe but they really don't and remember that looking at that monitor doesn't do anything but confuse you because when you see prices go up it makes you feel good if you see prices go down it makes you feel bad that's if you're long the opposite if you're short but it really doesn't make any difference, so try not to look at it. The only way you can break yourself of this habit is to do it in baby steps. If you're watching the monitor all day, try to break it from, say, don't look at it for 10 minutes and then 20 minutes and then 30 minutes. And you can – every I check it every 30 minutes. Those of you that have been out here to see me know that I don't like to look at these – things I put the orders in and you know that's really what I try to do so let's uh, let's keep that in mind okay looking at this first one from Bill you notice that it's expecting the uh, this is the a histogram that shows that the, the probability that uh, the top will be uh, be made sometime uh, in September or in top at sometime uh, in August. The second one that Bill showed us was this is the German Bund, and that's been uh, that's been going crazy because it's at a negative yield now too. Someone just posted it in the room at point uh, minus point six two. Uh, then we'll be looking here. <laughs> no, Bruce, I, I try to keep my eye on the road. In fact, I'm driving like an old man these days anyway, which I am. So <laughs> that makes it about right. So that's also topping. And then, of course, he has another one here, which is the Japanese uh, bond market. And that's been negative for, for quite some time. And it also has a tendency to top during that August period. And we're in the middle of August as of today, as we come into this full moon tomorrow. And uh, we'll watch Tomorrow is my grandson's birthday, 19 years old. I can't believe it, but uh, he was born on the full moon in August of 2000, and uh, his middle name is Moon. His name is Chase Moon Doyle. His mother is quite involved with the uh, the esoteric part of astrology. Not from my end, but she does like reading charts and things like that. Uh, David White just posted something from Paul Tudor Jones that we should probably read this every day. These are the rules that he goes by. is lose your opinion, not your money. Never average your losers. Folks, that's the worst thing you can do in anything is to average your losing trades. That's, that, that'll never work. Never trade in situations where you don't have control. And if you have a position that is making you uncomfortable, the solution is really simple. Get out. W.D. Gann said, when in doubt, get out, and so did uh, Jesse Livermore and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, don't be concerned about where you got into position. Be concerned how you get out of position. That goes back to the movie Knock on Any Door. 
with the John Derrick. He plays a detective, and they ask him, you know, what do you do when you walk into a room? He said, the first thing I do is look for the two exits that can get me out of it, and that's what you should do with your positions. Be concerned on how to take care of yourself and getting out of positions. The most important rule of trading is to play defense, not offense. And every day you assume your position is wrong. You want to protect yourself against losses and don't have an ego, folks. Uh, I had a hard time with that earlier in my career. And I, uh, fortunately, I was uh, very generous and I kept a lot of my friends. But, boy, I was, I was flat out obnoxious when I was making money at the very beginning because I never had any. And to have it was a, was a big change after I lost it. I realized what the importance of it was, but that's it. Anyway, those are the main things that you want to pay a close attention to. Now, the next thing we want to look at here, folks, is the British pound. We're down in this area here where it's really trying to hold. Let's just get this up here so we can take a quick look at it. Uh, uh, we got down to this uh, 120 20 level. That was uh, the low that we made, and we rallied about 100 pips off of that. We really haven't gone anywhere, but it is trying to make uh, some type of a bottom. The U.S. dollar index has, you know, made that big three drive to a top pattern that, and we're now trading. Uh, we've been down for a week, and we're having a pretty strong day today because the euro was a little weaker. But uh, we need to get that. If the dollar is going to be really strong, it needs to get above 99. If we get the dollar above 99, folks, that's going to be a game changer. I don't know if it has anything to do with the tariffs or any of that other stuff, but we do that. That would be important. And also on the downside, if the dollar would get below 95, that would also uh, be some type of a game changer because that means that the euro would strengthen up and then we would be looking at a much, much lower dollar. But that's uh, down the road. Um, the questions that are people asking me about the gold market, I mentioned yesterday that it was due for a correction. We did. We dropped, uh, I thought it was going to drop about 60 bucks. We dropped 50 $56 in a matter of a few hours. Since that time, we've rallied back to the 61% retracement up here at uh, 1525. Uh, the high's been 1529. And so if, uh, the 786 on this comes in at uh, 1533. If we get it above 1533, folks, you're most probably going to go up and see an expansion there uh, up around the 1585, uh, uh, 1600 level. And above 1600 is going to take you above the 61% retracement of that whole move uh, from from uh, August of uh, 2011 when we hit 1932. Folks, if we ever get above 1932, the profit, the profit, price profit, on <laughs> let's try to use words, Larry. The price objective on that ABCD swing should we clear 1600 in the gold, which we could easily do. I'm you know, I'm hoping to see a $120 correction here to get a good place to buy it. But it, it, that that profit objective takes you to $2,700 an ounce. And that's, uh, you know, that's not unreasonable because, you know, once we cleared, you know, the 860 level, we went to 1911 or 1932. Uh, per ounce. That was in August of uh, 2011. So uh, we could easily do that. That's a that's not undoable. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Uh, someone's asking a question about negative interest rates. Hey, if you believe in it, do it. I mean, it's you know I don't understand it. I think it's the most. I haven't yet to met anybody that I talk about that, that says they would do that, but that's what they're doing, so that's the main thing. The cattle futures, and Mr. Z's talking about that. They've had a big collapse in cattle, and that's uh, the lack of demand is part of it, but also, you know, the the, the uh, other things that are that are going on with the tariffs are having some effect, but these cattle have broken a great deal. They've pulled hogs down, too, so uh, we are, you know, probing for a bottom down in here, but we want to wait to get a little bit more more information. The uh no, the demand is there. Uh, natural gas. And natural gas looking pretty good. Yeah, we'll cover natural gas when we get back, Tucker. I'll put up the chart for it. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. 
The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and someone said we have a caller this morning. Can I help you? I guess we don't have a caller. Hmm. Well, thought no. Rich Anderson was going to join us today, but maybe I'm wrong. We'll have I, to wait and see. I'm here. Larry. Hey, hey Rich. How are you doing this morning? Good. Good. I was trying to use another speaker. Don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, Rich, has the end of the world been reached in the corn market yet? Uh, I think I think we're at a pause point. Uh, you know, they, they caught everybody leaning the wrong way, and they're punishing them. I figure the punishment will be over no later than tomorrow morning. Uh, mm -hmm. basis, you know, various things. And uh, so I'm just, you know, looking for some kind of market action. But the gap that we left is very disconcerting. We need to overcome that gap in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I, the, the, the amount of un prevent plant acres, of both the corn and the beans, I think they're playing with the numbers, but, you, you know, you got to, Play the cards that are dealt on the on the table, and for the moment, those are the cards cards dealt on the table, and in the market will tell us when those cards are going to be changed, and that's that's what I'm looking for. You know, I, I was looking for a bearish report to give me an opportunity, and I think this is opportunity, um, but you've you've got to trade it technically, and you got to manage your risk. They, you, you know, the six the, the key to being a successful in trading long term because any fool can make money on one trade is to learn how to be a professional at when you're wrong and losing small amounts. Mm -hmm. 
Rich, someone's asked a question. Did they do this on purpose? You know, give us bad information when it was in June when they said there's going to be no more corn in the whole world, and now we're a dollar a bur dollar a bushel lower, and they tell us we have more corn than we'll ever use. I mean, is this? He's asked, he's asking the question. Is this done on purpose? Well, you, you, you know, it, it, in conspiracy theory, it almost seemed like it. It's, uh, I, I, you know, in June, the commercials, <clears throat> you know, weren't covered, and and you've seen that in the basis. You know, the basis went from forty and fifty under uh, to even money. You know, so as the market went down, the cash price went up, and so it didn't change all that much to the to the farmer up until this report because the cash price kept increasing as you know the cash versus the futures the cash used to be 60 under and all of a sudden it's even money you know the the commercial needed to get covered and you can tell that's what was happening mm -hmm. you know they they can't destroy the commercials mm -hmm. <clears throat> that that's you know that's that's my view of it and, What's happened? And then, yeah, and then uh, in the cattle market, you had a, an unexpected fire of a Tyson plant last week, and and so now you're going to have the packers in control of the market, and they're going to make you know maybe three hundred dollars a head, and the feedlots are going to be looking for where can I sell my cattle, and the you know the best places on the board, and, and so that that kind of became a train you know a train wreck mm -hmm. from a fire. So you know things okay. sometimes happen. Well, that's why I was warning about the cattle market because of the fact that, you know, we had this, uh, you know, really big collapse in cattle. So it's been really, uh, really quite amazing. Uh, what about right. now, because we have, you just don't have a place to kill that many cattle? You know, you've taken you need to kill 100. Let's say you need to kill 100 head and you took, you know, capacity for 15 head away. Those 15 head got to go someplace else. and There's no place to go. That's that's the problem. I, I didn't interrupt your question. No, no, no. The other question that that they ask me every every session here is about negative interest rates. I, I, I don't understand it. No one's been able to explain it to me. Uh, it's never happened before in seven thousand years of history of economics. But uh, can you give an explanation of negative interest rates, uh, Rich? Well, it, it, it part part of it, you know, like in Germany, it's, it's six tenths underneath. Um, you know, you pay a thousand and sixty dollars, and you get back a thousand. Yeah, I, you know, part of it is the, the, some a certain amount of money has to be put into government bonds, and the mm -hmm. banks have to take what they're told and do what they're told. And it's it, it makes it makes no sense to me. It'll eventually it'll be a train wreck. But in the meantime, you know, negative interest rates. As I said last time I was on the show, gold and silver. And silver's undervalued versus gold in the relationship. So, mm -hmm. you know, get, go with the ponies that are running. Yeah, that, that's Not a good those one. Those that are in the stable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like that one. Yeah, hey. yeah I, I got a better one. Faldy oats is a lot more expensive than the oats that's been to a horse. You know. Now, <laughs> hey, listen. Thanks for calling in, Rich. I really appreciate yeah. it. And, oh, one other question we have asking: uh, the beans have actually held up incredibly well during the fall in uh, wheat and corn. Um, the beans still looking good to you longer term? I, I think uh, I think that's maybe going to be a story that nobody's thinking about right now. I, you know, I can I can make a case for bean oil. Because if they, if we don't need the meal, you know, they're still going to need the bean oil. And, you know, the last time I was out in the country, which was a week and a half ago, I'm, I could still roll fields. And your your yield is dependent on the canopy, you know, the, the, the leaves cover over the dirt and that preserves the moisture. And that's when you get the best yield. Uh, on the other hand, it's continuing to rain. And rain in August produces more pods. So mm -hmm. I don't. You know, I, I think there's a story there, and, and the, the harvest lows, you know, I think we're going to have a giddy-up. Uh, you know, the, the two leaders, Xi and, and Trump, they both have their individual problems, and they need to uh, sit down and get it squared away. It's not helping anybody over here or over there. I agree with that 100%. Rich, thanks for joining in, buddy. I really appreciate it. <laughs> All take care. Okay, you bet. Rich Anderson, folks, of Anderson Capital Management. Let's take a quick look here at the natural gas. We're waiting for a really important bottom here. Uh, one of the things that I've been working on with John Jameson are patterns that uh, show 
uh, tops and bottoms, and we've got some, you know, real, real incredible research on how these things are actually done. Not just looking at the Fibonacci ratios, but in the sequence of actually how it happens. And we have that situation going on here in natural gas. You'll notice today we completed an ABCD pattern over the past week from August the 5th into the 14th. So that's a 12-day cycle, topped right almost exactly to the 61% retracement, missed it by a half a point, and now we're in a corrective mode. So this corrective mode is going to be really indicative of what we're going to be expecting. And uh, the key here will be the 207 level. Uh, the 207 level, if we break that, then we're going to be looking at something, you know, considerably lower, as you can see from that black line that's showing from the uh, June 20th down to the June 29th. Uh, excuse me, July 29th. That's basically a price line showing us that we'd be looking at a 1.97 in the uh, natural gas should we get there. So the sequence that we're looking at right now is very, very important, especially with the top being made today, a pullback. And if we exceed that top and get above 222, that changes the whole the whole structure of what we're watching here. So let's uh, kind of keep an eye on that. The stocks are weakening up again. We've given up everything that we made yesterday. And uh, this is not acting very good, folks. It's just uh, it's one of those things that uh, makes you wonder why it jumped as much as it did yesterday, but went right up into resistance and, you know, stopped exactly where it should have. So we'll see. 877-927-6648. <laughs> I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranked me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers 
customers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I've been asked to take a look at the pound versus the Swiss franc cross rate. You know, we got 29 countries in the eurozone, and they cross those different currencies. But, you know, I stick basically to the big six with the dollar. I don't do these crosses very often. I'll do the pound, yen, euro, yen, of course, and the euro pound. But this was a little unusual one. But what he's showing here is a potential bottom, a potential triple bottom down in this area, 1.16. And that that means that you're long the pound, short the Swiss. So if you're looking to buy the pound, you're looking at that level of 1.20 holding. And if it doesn't hold, the next level on the on the British pound that we've talked about several times here, and let's just post it again just so we don't forget because it's going to be real interesting if we do get down to there. That's the area of 108.30, and we could certainly do that without too much trouble because the amount of bounce that we've got here in the pound is like a balloon without helium. I mean, it just doesn't want to go up very much. So I'm looking for 118.30. That takes out the Brexit low. We went from 150, you know, down to 119 and change, and then we rallied all the way up to 143. And if we take that old low out there at 119, I think we could get down to that 108 level, 118 level very easily. Remember, the pound at one time, back in 1985, got down to I believe, uh, I think it was 85, as I recall. Was it 85? I might have been 103. That's one of those two numbers. I think it was 103. And uh, But we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting to think. Um, the European leverage in Brexit has diminished. I don't know that, Terry. Uh, that's uh, I just look at the charts. You know, sometimes they help you, sometimes they don't. They help you more than they hurt you, that's for sure, because you're not going to be fooled with bullish fundamentals like we've seen in hogs and corn and some of these other things. So that's really the bottom line of what we're watching here. We're at a critical level here at this 2860 in the S&P. We break below that, folks. It's not going to be very nice, and we can have one of those days where the Dow's going to go quite a bit. We will see a day where the Dow's down more than uh, – 1,100 points for sure. Uh, we had a big drop was 900. You multiply that times 1.6. That means the next drop will be around 1,500 points in the Dow in one day, someday, but when, who knows? 877-927-6648. See you on the flip side.